I've watched the movie Schindler's List, I don't know, probably 10 times in my life. And today, here in Krakow, to walk into the factory, um, to learn more about the man uh, who was complicated and controversial. He was a Nazi. He went on then to save 1,200 Jews who worked for him in this ceramics factory, who then went on to have children and grandchildren. So overall, they suggest that Oscar Schindler ultimately saved 8,000 people when you think of the, the generations that followed. But what was most remarkable to me are the parallels between what we're seeing today with Vladimir Putin's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine and Adolf Hitler's uh, invasion of Poland in 1939. Militarily, it's fascinating to see Poland at that time, August of 1939, people were going about their regular lives. Nobody thought anything was going to happen. Everybody thought Hitler was bluffing. Well, guess what? The same thing happened now. In this case, everybody thought Vladimir Putin was bluffing. They had Poland surrounded from three angles. It's almost a mirror image of how Putin has been surrounding Ukraine and the cities of Ukraine to attack. And, and it took 27 days for Hitler to overtake Poland. Um, we're looking at a slow crawl through Ukraine right now, much deadlier weapons. Um, but I think what I learned most during this experience was that one person can make a difference. There's a room in here called the room of choices and it's so emotional because it's all those little acts of kindness that people did during the Second World War that gave hope or saved a life. One person did that and we're seeing it again today. One person holds up a handmade sign and says, come and stay at my house. I know your life has been turned upside down in a heartbeat. So again, Poland is saving lives in this instance by bringing in, now we're almost 500,000 war refugees in a matter of a week. You know, two years ago, we landed in Krakow to mm. go cover the Auschwitz uh, liberation, the anniversary of the Auschwitz liberation. And I remember at the time you and I had conversations about human beings, capacity for good and evil. Mm. And uh, being here today inside this factory, that definitely came mm. up for me again today. So, you know, as, as I, I know you were talking to sort of a, our guide inside. Mm. What did he have to say about that concept of evil? His concept is rooted in the fact that he was born in this city when it was Soviet. He remembers he was a seven-year-old boy, 1993, when the tanks, the Soviet tanks, pulled out of Poland. So it is very present and very real what's happening today, that the Russian military is invading Ukraine. That's part of the reason Poland is so pivotal in all of this, is because it's so fresh in the memory bank. Um, but you mentioned our visit two years ago. Interestingly, uh, the last trip we did before the pandemic locked us down was to Krakow. And it's the first big trip we make for a similar reason. War. That was war. This is war. We met a woman, Angela, who now lives in Montreal, one of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. She was born on the third bunk in Barrack 13 at Auschwitz a baby born in December of 1944. She was five weeks old when they were able to liberate the, uh, the death camp at Auschwitz. And she sent me a note actually this week while we're here in Krakow. Uh, of course, she doesn't remember. She was a baby. She was born in Auschwitz. But her whole life has been informed by that. And she's been watching what's happening right now. And basically can't believe, as I think most of us can't, that this is happening again. But also she speaks about good and evil. She speaks about the people that helped her then, her mother, and the stories she grew up hearing about. And again, we're seeing that now. So the, the good and evil is such a fine line at times. Really quickly, Lisa, you know, last night we spoke about what a privilege it is for us to be here. Mm. It's, it's a really tough story to cover but it's an absolute privilege, especially just coming out back from that outside, that coming from visiting that factory. 
uh, you know, witnessing it, history. It, it is. I mean, I think the weight of, of a world event like this is, it's certainly a privilege to be able to convey what's happening to Canadians. It, it absolutely is. It's also a reminder, though, of how we can never take our eye off the ball. I think that's the key to all of this, is everybody just assumed Vladimir Putin was all talk, no action. Now we're seeing this man literally want to take over a country. It wasn't just those two separatist states. It, it is the entire country. And the fact that he uses terms like the denazification of Ukraine, here we see what the Nazi regime and Adolf Hitler did to an entire population. We're now seeing it unfold there. It is not Jews this time. Obviously, we are looking at a nation of people. He is indiscriminate in his bombing apartment buildings, civilian facilities. These are not military facilities. Whether he's really serious, yesterday they agreed to these safe passages out. Who knows? Who knows whether you're to believe this or not? It's, uh, it's one of those mind games that he's playing on the entire world.